What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. Pokemon types are a big part of their overall identity, and a type setup that doesn't necessarily match up can make us scratch our heads. But oftentimes a Pokemon only has to be a part of one type for it to work. However, what if they had to all be dual typed in some way? You might ask, why would they have to do that? Well, that's not the point, but if you need a reason, then April Fool's Day, I guess? But it's more to just see if it can be done. Now, I have nothing against pure typed Pokemon, since some of my favorites are just a single type. And honestly, there are a ton of single type Pokemon out there. Maybe even the majority, I don't know, but we'll have to divide it up and just start with Kanto. Now, about just over half of the Pokemon from Generation 1 are a single type. So we have a lot to go on, even with some Pokemon already gaining a second type over the years. So just for some rules, I will be looking at these Pokemon as is. Meaning, as cool as it might be for some of them to have the ice type slapped on, we won't be changing anything about them. Also, it's worth noting that we'll mostly find fits with the more abstract types, since you can pretty well look at a Pokemon and it's obvious that they don't have leaves or flames coming off of them, so it's harder to include those types. Also, since this is entirely just for fun, I will be rating my choices for how good they actually fit, from being the definitive way the Pokemon should be, to it's pretty okay, to eh, it's not great, to they absolutely should not be changed, but hey, we gotta play the game. Let's get started. So as we know, the Bulbasaur line were all grass and poison type, so the first monotyped Pokemon we come across is Charmander with Charmeleon. These fire type starters I could easily see becoming part dragon types, since people have been associating the dragon type with this evolutionary line for years. Although I should point out that we will not be changing any Pokemon that already has two types. So unfortunately for Charizard, he will not be getting the dragon type here which is probably a downgrade, but still. Overall, I would rate this as pretty good for these two fiery reptilians. And of course, the last starter in the trio, Squirtle, was pure water type, as was the entire family. Looking at these turtles, their most prominent feature is of course their shells. So I think adding the rock type to Squirtle could be good, along with War Turtle, to show just how strong these shells actually are. But for Blastoise, I'm going with Steel. Not only to signify an even stronger shell, but of course the giant cannons on its back. This is pretty solid in my opinion, and would have been interesting to have another starter changing types upon its final evolution. Now we come to Caterpie, and when you look at it, this worm is about as bug as bug can be. So the only thing that I could think to do is add the normal type, because it's just so plain. It doesn't really fit, but we've yet to have this type combination anywhere, so it might as well be here, right? As for its evolution, Metapod, I'm inclined to add the rock typing to denote its advanced hardening capabilities. Altogether, I would say that Metapod is okay, and again, the only reason Caterpie gets any acceptance is because of the unique combination it produces. Next is the Rattata family, and to me, if anything, they seem most like ground types, just because they're so dirty and low to the ground. And we don't want to infringe on their Alolan forms with the dark typing, but I'd give it at least one star just because it's better than nothing, and it would have given it to us long before Diggersby. After that, we find the pure poison snakes of Ekans and Arbuck, who I would give the dark type. See, outside of the altered forms, Kanto has no actual dark types. So those Sinister Serpents, I think, could easily have been given Dark after its introduction. So I fully endorse them to have the Dark typing, or at least Arbuck, so Kanto can have a single legitimate one. Now for the mascot, Pikachu, I can't really find anything suitable besides normal. And that's probably for a good reason. But with Raichu, I would opt for the Fighting type, which could be a subtle hint towards the fabled Gorochu, but truthfully, neither of these Pokemon should really change their typing. And similarly, we now have Sandshrew and Sandslash, who I think were meant to be connected a lot more to Pikachu, given that they are right next to each other, and they share a category, so I will say that they could also be given normal and fighting respectively, except this time I would actually give it at least one star, because I think it'd be okay. Then we see the large Nidoran family, and with the first two, I would give them the normal type as well. Which doesn't sound that cool, but 
is again a combination that we have never seen and would be good to have. As for their middle stages, I would say to go ahead and give them the ground typing that we see them gain in their royal final forms. That's if we had to, since I think they're probably fine as is, but I would give the first types a bump just to finally have a poison a normal type Pokemon. Oh, Clefairy and Clefable are super easy, just slap the normal type back on. After all, that's what they used to be before becoming pure fairy, so just give them the same setup as Jigglypuff. I would say that's a pretty good possibility and really has no downsides, so I'll give it at least two. Next is a great one with Vulpix and Ninetales, who would have a lot of options, but I'm going to go with Ghost. These foxes are associated with spells and curses already and can learn a number of Ghost-type moves, so providing Kanto with anyone outside of the Ghastly line deserves at least two stars, and I could really see it. Next is probably one of the hardest ones with Diglett and Dugtrio, and I could only really bring myself to add the normal type, since they are so thoroughly ground Pokémon. So playing along, I would make it normal, but I wouldn't actually recommend it. The Meowth line is next, and I finally narrowed it down to Fairy with the way that they are now. It's not perfect, maybe, I would only give it one star myself, but it would create a pretty cool relationship between its other regional forms, being strong and weak to one of each. Psyduck and Golduck are up next, and we all know that they should have been Psychic-type. The names, the descriptions, to the move pools, all make them seem like they should be Psychic-types anyway, so this indeed should have been the case from the start. Now, Makey and Primeape may be the most interesting one to me, since I honestly think the electric type could work. Their fur is so drastically disheveled, I could easily see it being from static electricity, not to mention the conductive shackles. And they can already learn a surprising number of electric type moves. So I would give it a solid two stars, even if maybe it would be better as some sort of regional variant in the future. After that is Growlithe and Arcanine, who are pretty solid pure fire types, and it might be strange, but I would offer the dragon type to the pair. Not only can they learn many dragon moves, but it would also lean into the legendary Pokemon category. But outside of that, they could probably do without it, so I'll just give it, what, half a star? Next we find Poliwag and Poliwhirl, and I actually think I would give them the psychic type. This of course would largely be from the swirls on their bodies, allowing for easier hypnotic powers and it would create an interesting dichotomy when they changed into a fighting type in the final stage, kinda like the situation with Gallade. So I would give it at least one and a half stars because it could actually work. Then we have an entire family of single-type psychic users with the Abra line, and if I had to say, I think maybe the ground type could apply? They all have earthy tones and seem like they would live in an arid place, at least to me. But other than looks, there's nothing else to tie it in with the ground type, so I wouldn't press it that heavily. But next is another three-stage trade evolution group with the Machop family, and it seems pretty obvious that these Reptilian fighters would become dragon type as well. It honestly would explain a lot, since most other regular fighting types are mainly human, and it'd be better than waiting two decades for Komoa to get here, so I'd get this option at least two stars. As for the next one with Ponyta and Rapidash, I can really only think it has to be normal. I thought maybe Rock given their sturdy hooves they have, but that's not enough of a connection without a redesign, so these ones are probably the least likely out of any fire types in Kanto. Then we don't see a single typed Pokemon until Seal, and this one is fairly obvious. It should just be an ice type like its evolved form. And I would fully endorse this as the true form, since there are so few ice types already. So why not go ahead and give it to the baby seal that lives in the tundra as well? We next come across Grimer and Muck, and I considered ground, but I think I'll have to go with dark. Now, I realize this is just the Alolan form at this point, but at least we know that it works this way, right? I mean, they do have a lot of dark moves naturally, but still I wouldn't want to overshadow the tropical rainbow versions, so we could just leave them separated. We now move to another lone base stage with Shelter, and while it is tempting to once again throw ice onto anything we can, I think I'll opt for Rock instead, just to show how strong its shell really is. And I also think it'd be pretty funny if Shelter actually had an advantage over Cloyster, so I'll give it a hearty two stars. 
Now we come to some of the creepiest Pokemon in Drowsy and Hypno, and to reflect that, I have to give them the Dark type. I mean, there's a whole incident with kidnapping, so I think it could fit these Dream Tapers well enough for at least one and a half stars, because they are certainly evil. This next one might sound strange, but hear me out. I'm going to give Krabby and Kingler the bug type. Now, I know they're not insects, but they do have many insectoid qualities with multiple limbs and hard outer bodies. Besides, it's almost impossible to add bug to anything, so we gotta do it while we can. I'd say it's worth at least one star just to get the combination a few years early. Now, with Voltorb and Electrode, we know that these Pokémon should be Steel types, right? I mean, they're just metal orbs filled with electricity. So if at any point a Pokémon's composition should be taken into account, it's with these two Pokéball ripoffs. The absolute bosses of Cubone and Marowak are next. And while Pure Ground is fine in my eyes, I do think they could both get away with being Ghost types as well. Obviously, Marowak gains this in its Alolan form, but given their backstories and using bones for battle, would it really be such a stretch to think that a latent spirit might join them? As for the Hitmons, I don't think that they would be the same. I would probably give Hitmon Lee ground since it is focused on the legs and its power comes from a proper stance. However, again, I'm inclined to say that this weird Dino Man is the dragon typing. That's if we had to, but they're probably fine without it, especially given that the punchy Pokémon can't learn a single dragon move. However, I think that would work for the next Pokémon, Lickitung. After all, it is already a pink dragon thing. The fact that it's got a massive tongue shouldn't detract from how clearly reptilian it is. Two stars, quick, before it evolves and loses its touch. The next one I really like, which is coughing and wheezing, gaining the flying type. It's not required per se, but they are highly focused around gases, which makes them perfect for this air-based element. Besides, we still only have one Poison and Flying type line to this day, so I would give it a solid two stars as they could definitely have made it work. And real quick with Chansey, I think it's a no-brainer just to make it a fairy type. In fact, I think it should have been regardless, I don't really care if it would be immune to outrage. Next is Tangela, and we don't really know what's hidden on the inside, but I'm gonna go with the dark type, because I just get the feeling that it's probably quite nefarious, right? Or maybe not, it doesn't really matter, since if anyone needs to stay monotyped, it is Tangela, since it is the only pure grass Pokémon in all of Kanto. Kangaskhan has some decent options, but I'm going to say Rock, both because its rough skin seems incredibly durable, and the fact that we still don't have a normal and rock type, so this would be a good excuse. I could see it on two stars. With Horsey and Seedra, I think we all know where this is going by giving them the dragon typing, since their category is the dragon Pokemon, and they would be just like their final form, Kingdra. So I'd say they probably should have been this way all along. However, with Goldeen and Seeking, they're just plain fish. So the only thing that I could really think to do was make their horns poisonous? It could happen, but they can also only learn Poison Jab, so it's not super likely, but let me know if you can come up with anything else without changing aspects of their design. Man, there's a lot of water types here, but yeah, Staryu should definitely be part Psychic type, just like its evolution. I would say it should have been this way. I honestly don't know why it isn't. Just to show the differences that evolution can make, I guess? That, or the fact that they didn't want to obliterate all grass types in Misty's gym, since they all had the poison type as well. Now we get down to the used-to-be one-offs, starting with Electabuzz, I think it's pretty obvious to add the fighting type. Despite many confused fans, we still don't have an electric and fighting type Pokémon, so I think that this stocky Thunderman could fit the bill no problem. I did struggle a bit more with its counterpart, Magmar, but I've come to see that the poison typing could be appropriate. Magmar seems to have a big focus on smoke, and can learn different poison attacks, so I think they could easily pull it off and get us all out of the idea that a poison type has to be purple. Then there's also Pinsir, who is a great pure bug type. And there is the Mega Form, which adds flying, but that is a drastically altered design, so for the original, I would probably give it Fighting 2. I'd give it 2 stars, because it would be an even better connection to Heracross for later on, but really, it is a great pure bug type, and should probably stay that way. Tauros is another great single-stage Pokémon, and I think that we could get away with giving it the ground type. 
This bulging bovine seems like it could have a connection to the earth beneath it, and it can already use many powerful ground type moves. So I would give it at least two stars as the more likely normal and ground type that we've seen. Now we find Magikarp, and with its evolved form Gyarados being a flying type, it could be possible. Magikarp does jump exceedingly high after all, but I'm going to give it normal, since Magikarp is simply so puny, and it would have given us the combination a few years earlier, but still probably isn't a perfect fit. Ditto was a bit harder, since it can shift into anything else. So all I could really think to do was use Psychic, since then it could read the mind of its targets and make the copies even better. And that could even explain how it gets to know their moveset, but I don't know that it's necessary. I think pure normal is fine enough. Next we find Eevee, and I thought maybe the ground type, since I didn't want to use anything that it would actually turn into, but really nothing needs to be done as pure normal is spot on with this one. However, the Eeveelutions are all single typed as well, which is pretty fine, but what if we added normal to all of them? This time it's not because they're so plain, but instead is a reference to Eevee, and would have given us some unique combinations a long time before we actually saw them. So I'm going to give it two and a half stars since I could really see them going down this more exclusive path. And yet another pure normal type with Porygon, this time I would apply the Steel type. This is one that I would wholeheartedly recommend, as it should have gained this in Gen 2, just like the Magnets did as it's the first synthetic Pokémon. And also it would have given us a Normal and Steel type, which we have yet to receive, so Porygon would have been the perfect way to introduce this to the world. Then after the fossils, we find Snorlax, who I would probably add the fighting type to since he is a physical beast and could certainly put all of that bulk to good use. So I could see it happening if it had to, but a pure normal roadblock is still probably fine. Now for the pseudo legends of Dratini and Dragonair, and given their final stage Dragonite is a flying type, that could work, but I'm actually going to give them both the water type. I mean, you could only find them in the water to catch them at the start, and they were frequently described as living in the water. So I would say that this is another borderline one where they almost should have been these types, but I won't fault them for wanting at least some pure dragon Pokémon out there. And of course, we have the legendary pair of Mewtwo and Mew. And since Mewtwo is a clone, it is tempting to add the same type to both of them, but I'm going to say that they didn't quite get the process right, and missed out. So while I would say Mew could have the fairy type, Mewtwo will have Dark. I feel like this would pretty well distinguish their differences, and I think Mewtwo would have benefited from the Dark type, maybe even intentionally being added by those in charge. But I wouldn't say that the fairy type would be nearly as strong with the weird Cat Pixie. But those are the types that I would add to the Kanto roster to make all of them dual-typed Pokémon. Some of them were pretty convincing, but others show that they did see the value in not overcomplicating things. But what do you think of a world of all dual-typed Pokémon? Which types would you have assigned? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!